Okay, in this video, I'm going to uh, write a ream on sum, a write ream on sum, actually, um, and take its limit to get the actual uh, value of the area enclosed by this curve. So what I'm doing is I'm going to use these summation formulas. we got to remember them. You might remember them from maybe Algebra 2. So the sum from 1 to n of just 1 is equal to n. Uh, the sum from 1 to n of i is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. The sum from 1 to n of i squared is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. Uh, the way I kind of remember that one is uh, it's it's like you multiply in an odd number in the numerator, or 2n plus 1, which is an odd number, and then an odd number in the denominator, 3, so 2 times 3 is 6. So it's kind of like you're going from the i to the i squared one. I don't know if that even matters to you, but it's how I remember it. Um, and then uh, this is about as high as you have to go, i cubed. It's going to be n squared, quantity n plus 1 squared, over 4. And if you compare that to uh, what we had for the sum of i, it's you actually just square what you had there. So that one's also easy to remember. All right, so here's a problem that we want to do. Uh, we have f of x is x squared plus 1. We want to do a right Riemann sum. The reason we're doing a right Riemann sum, if you remember back to the previous video, is that a right Riemann sum starts at i equals 1. Um, whereas a left Riemann sum is starting at i equals 0. All the formulas we know start at i equals 1, so it makes sense to do a right Riemann sum. I'm going to go from x equals 0 to x equals 2, um, and I want to use an infinite number of rectangles, which should give me the exact value. So this is just kind of like a lot of writing. The area is the limit as n approaches infinity, the sum from 1 to n of delta x, f of 0 plus i delta x. So 0 plus i delta x is what I called an evaluation point. Um, and if you don't remember where those come from, you should look back at the previous video again. So what I'll do now is uh, I'm going to, f of x I know is x squared plus 1. So I'm actually going to evaluate it at 0 plus i delta x. So this will look substantially the same, except there's no more f. So from 1 to n, delta x, parentheses. And now I'm plugging uh, essentially just i delta x in everywhere I see an x in uh, x squared plus 1. So it'll be the quantity i plus delta x or 0 plus i delta x, um, squared, and then plus 1, because that's part of the function. That's actually the number one thing that people forget, is uh, things that don't involve x. And so we're good there. Uh, next step, I'm just going to expand a little bit. So the sum from 1 to n, delta x. And then if I square i delta x, I get i squared delta x squared, plus 1 still. Next step, I'm going to distribute this delta x. Depending on how good you are at summations, uh, there's more that you, there's another step you could have done there, but I'll let you work that out on your own. So I've distributed. Um, in the next step, I'm actually I'm distributing the uh, limit and the summation. Uh, but delta x does not depend upon i, right? Delta x by itself is just going to be 2 minus 0 over n. There's no i involved, so it's a constant, and you can factor it out of the summation. So that's what I've done. I pulled out delta x cubed. And then I'm left with the summation of just i squared, which if you look above, we know. And then I'm going to factor delta x out again, because again, it doesn't depend upon i, so you can pull it out like it's a constant. And if you pull out delta x now, you're left with just that 1. So delta x and then the summation of 1. And so the next thing we're going to do, so you got to remember that delta x does not depend upon i. It's just 2 minus 0 over n, or just 2 over n. So we can simplify this. So I'm going to use the formulas above, and I'm going to replace all the delta x's with 2 over n. So I get the limit as n approaches infinity of 8 over n cubed, because I squared it, uh, cubed it rather. Um, and then i squared, the sum of that is n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1, all over 6. And then that's going to be plus delta x is, or the limit as n approaches infinity, delta x is 2 over n. And the sum of 1 is just n. So when you're doing this, you kind of know you've done it right if the uh, power of n in the numerator and the power of n in the denominator are equal. If they're not equal, you've probably done something wrong, or the area is not finite, uh, which is an entirely different issue that you'll run into later, but you shouldn't be running into now. So what I'm going to do now is just take the limit. I trust you're pretty good at taking limits because you've gotten this far. Um, don't ever forget that 2 that's in the numerator there for the i squared summation. Uh, so I get 8 times 2 over 6, and then plus 2, which is 8 over 3 plus 
6 over 3, which is 14 over 3, which is the exact value of the area. And uh, you might recall from the previous video that that's exactly what I got when I took the limit on my calculator for both the left and the right Riemann sums. So now I've done it by hand, um, and that's kind of neat. Obviously, we want to find a better way to do this, but we haven't yet. Uh, here's a really general version of what you're doing. So we have f of x, we have x equals a, we have x equals b, and we're going to use n rectangles. So first thing we do, calculate delta x, which is b minus a over n. Um, calculate the evaluation point. So this doesn't change. It's always, um, I'm going to call it x sub i. It's always going to be equal to a plus i delta x. Okay, and then the general formula that we want, the area, is the limit as n approaches infinity of the summation from 1 to n of delta x f of x sub i. And that'll give you the answer you're looking for. So uh, I hope you found this helpful. I know it's kind of a lot, but uh, I think it's useful. And uh, good luck.